Father, let's just start thanking God for a time like this. Let's appreciate his name for, for bringing us together again on this very rainy day in Cape Town. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord because he has been faithful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We, are, we shouldn't take some things for granted. We shouldn't even take anything for granted. It's not by our power, nor by our might. It's by the spirit of the living God. It's not as if we know what to do. It's not as if we are eating well or we are exercising well. It's the God in his mercy we are not consumed. The new is his mercy every day. So just let us appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for his goodness. Let's thank him for his protection, for the fact that we have not had urgency, emergency, from home, from our home, anywhere or abroad, it is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our sights. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord. He's been our provider. He's been our refuge. He's our refuge. He's our dwelling place. Let us praise his name. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. Did our exalted ancient of days. Let us thank him for his word that is going to come out today. That his word is ye and amen. That his word, as we hear his word, we will not be here alone, but do of your of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. And that the person that is going to speak his word, that the Lord will speak through him in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, we just thank you. We worship you. We adore you. Father, Lord, we exalt your holy name. King of glory, we thank you for this gathering because we know you are in our midst. We thank you, Father Lord, Lord, for the worship because we know that you are here. We thank you for your word, Father Lord God, as your word is being spoken, Father Lord God. Your word will be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet in the name of Jesus. Father, we exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks. For all you have done, we are so blessed, we are so blessed, our souls have found rest, oh Lord, we give you thanks, we give you thanks, Lord. Thanks, Father, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Our souls have found rest. Oh, Lord. We give you thanks. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Oh Lord, be lifted high. For you are holy, righteous, and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted, I be lifted, I be lifted high, I be lifted high, high. Oh Lord, be lifted, high. oh Lord, for you are who. Holy, righteous, and worthy, all the, O Lord, be lifted I, for you are holy, righteous, and worthy, O Lord, be lifted I, for you are holy, righteous, and worthy. O Lord, we lift you I, for you are holy. 
righteous and holy. O Lord, we lift you high. Father Lord, we lift you high. We worship you. We exalt you. We declare your glory. We declare, Father, that you alone are holy. You alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, you are all welcome once again. God bless you. Thanks for joining in today. Today we'll be um, wrapping up the series we started um, a month ago. Uh, we started looking at eternal relevance. So we'll be looking at the part five today. But before we look at the part five, let's do a quick recap. You know, in the past i um, looking at the past four series that we've, um, we've done, and then we move on to um, today, some teaching. So that's what we'll be looking at today. So in the first series, we introduced what eternal relevance is. You know, in the, that, that's what we did in the first series, looking at um, the fact that eternal relevance has to do with um, our, has to do with, you know, what we are doing. So when we talk about something relevant, you're talking about it performing a purpose. So it performing a purpose. So in terms of eternal relevance, so it's be fulfilling a purpose on this side of eternity and on the other side of eternity. And that's why God has called us. And who we are becoming, in terms of who we are becoming, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 1, that we are Christ. We are like Christ. We are his sons. And verse, um, we, 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 are, um, uh, we are like Christ. We are God's sons. And then verse 2 says that we are not yet like him, but when we see him face to face, we'll be just like him. So we are becoming like him. So that's eternal relevance. And where we are going, so you're talking about getting to heaven. The Bible says, you know, that our emphasis shouldn't just be about earth, but we should focus on heaven. The Bible says that what shall he profit a man if he loses his soul and if he gains this old world and loses his soul. And then in the second um, part, we started looking at Apostle Paul. And the reason why we picked Apostle Paul as, um, as our model, you know, person to, to emphasize on was the fact that this was someone that was completely sold out to God. The um, Bible says in, um, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Apostle Paul said that, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So, we, so that was why he, we picked him as our model. So we saw concerning Apostle Paul that in as much that he, is, he was, was Jewish, he also had Roman citizenship and he maximized the citizenship. So same thing with you and I, the Bible says that we are citizens of heaven. So we said, because we are citizens of heaven, and as we all know, oftentimes when there is dual citizenship, there's always one of the citizenship that has a greater power, has a greater potency. So oftentimes you see that people prefer to carry one passport, you know, over the other one. So based on that, you're saying the passport we should be carrying should be the passport of heaven. And how do we do that? How do we put this passport into reality? We need to exercise authority. The Bible says that he has given us power. He has given us authority. So we need to establish his counsel. The Bible says that not my will but thine be done. And we need to exhibit his character because we are Christ-like, because we are his children. So we looked at, so that was what the, the second teaching when we looked at the person of Apostle Paul. So in the third, in the third one, we so we in the third series, we looked at the pursuit. So we started with the person of Apostle Paul, and then um, so um, sec, I'm looking at three, yeah. So in three, so second we looked at this person, and in three we looked at his pursuit. So when you talk about pursuit, pursuit is something you are going after. You know, something you 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 are putting your everything into. And if you look at Apostle Paul, a couple of things that characterizes pursuit, even when he was an unbeliever. This man paid a price. Even when he was an unbeliever, this man was passionate. So he was purpose-driven. So you and I, we said that we shouldn't just be ambitious. You know, we shouldn't just be driven by ambition because everything about ambition will come to an end the moment our lives come to an end on this side, surface of eternity. But in terms of purpose-driven life, 
It will have, the, the, the purpose will outlive us. Legacy will outlive us and then we'll be accountable when we get to heaven. And then we say that we need to be passionate. He was very, very passionate about, about his pursuit. So we need to be passionate about our pursuit, you know, with God. We need to put in our everything. God, God is after people who are wholehearted. And then we talk about ensuring sacredness in your secular so that we need to stop with that dichotomy that oftentimes the Christianists will speak will say, you know, it's a, it's a Christian um, cliche, saying this is my spiritual life, this is my secular life. But we are saying that no, in your secular life, you are because you are sanctified, the spiritual aspect of you needs to come out to the fore because you're supposed to work for God. And in part four, and the last teaching we looked at, so after his pursuits, we looked at his preaching. So the Bible talks about, you know, how shall they hear except the preach? So in terms of preaching, it's about our conversation. It's about our conduct. And we saw concerning Paul that everything about him was about, in as much that he talked about grace, he talked about love. But something, the theme that cuts across all his teachings when he spoke to individuals, when he spoke to Timothy, Philemon, you know, when, he, when Titus, those individual letters, when he wrote to the churches, Ephesians, Colossians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, a theme that was consistent was grace. So we're saying to you and I as well, we know the Bible says we've been saved by grace. It's not of works, it's a gift from the Lord. And the Bible also says we, we are supposed to serve in by grace. We've seen 1 Corinthians 15, 10, where Paul was saying that, I know that even though he's been given great grace, but he still works very hard. So we serve him by grace. And we see in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 6 to from verse 6 onward, you know, Ephesians 4 from verse 6 onward, where it talks about we've been given based on the gift that God has given us to dispense, you know, to serve others, is giving us grace. And we also know that we are sustained by grace. Second Corinthians 12, 9. Second Corinthians 12, 9, and his grace is sufficient for us. So those are the things we saw. So we've seen his person, we've seen his pursuit, we've seen his preaching. Today, we'll be looking at his prayer. So that's what our emphasis will be on today. So and I'm believing that God by himself will minister to us. I'm believing God that there shall be a word for the now for everyone that is listening to this message today. I'm believing God that there shall be testimonies and there shall be grace to the doers of his word. I'm believing God that as we've come to the as we've come to the end of this series, that it won't just be that one of those teachings where I just have it in my notebook, but it shall be a reality in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> so let's look at a couple of things about his prayers. <coughs> I want us to start by reading a text. Let's read that text, which is um, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. Colossians 9, 1 to 12. The Bible says, for this reason, we also, most of the things we'll be looking at will be from this um, scripture. So I want us to carefully look at it together. For this reason, we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray. Take note of that. Do not cease to pray. And also, the second thing I want you to see is there, pray for you. And, and then the third thing is to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. Those are the other things I want you to take note of. Knowledge of his will in all wisdom. So we've seen knowledge of his will, in all wisdom, spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy. Take note of that walk, fully pleasing him. Remember, we talked about wholeheartedly earlier on, being fruitful in every good work. Take note of that good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Also take note of strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and love suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So, they, they, so that's, that's our focus. So that, that's the, our main text. So let's begin to look at some of the things, some of the elements of his prayers. If you look at the, in, the, in the first teaching, when we are looking at the, the lenses through which we, could, we should look at, the lenses which we, we should look through um, at, at, at eternal relevance, you see that all these elements, we talk about relativeness, Things that you know, looking at the bigger picture, then we talk about fitness, being fit for the kingdom of God. We look at alignment with God's purpose. So those are some of the elements we looked at then. We also look at timelessness. You see that all these elements are in Apostle Paul's prayer. The first one is ceaseless. 
So we saw that in those we saw that in that scripture already. But let's read those two more scriptures. So we've seen in Colossians one and when he said that he see, he continued to pray. Well, Colossians now Romans one nine. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing, we have seen this again. I make mention of you always, always in my prayer. Second Timothy one three. So that was to Romans, that was to a group of people. Now let's see to an individual. First Timothy, Second Timothy 1 3. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. So we saw how he prayed for a group of people. Now again, we are seeing how he prayed for an individual. And the consistent thing was without ceasing continuously you know if you look at the prayer so if you look at him about about a ceaseless prayer so this talks about consistency so it wasn't a thing of being faithless it wasn't a thing of you know maybe god didn't hear the first time no that's not what paul was talking about paul was practicing what jesus christ preached in in luke chapter 18 verse 1 where the bible says that pray, men ought to pray and not to faint that was what he was preaching. So you could see that, and he practiced it. If Paul preached it, he practiced it. He, he exhorted others to follow this example. In Second um, Thessalonians, for example, um, or First Thessalonians, rather, it's a popular scripture, First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. You see there it says, brethren, um, um, 15 and 17. Now may the God of um, verse 15 and 17. Thank you. 16 and 17. Rejoice always. That's ceaseless. Pray without ceasing. So he preached it. He practiced it. So and if you look at, so if you look at it, so that was his prayer wasn't transactional. It wasn't a thing of gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy. It wasn't about just giving me things. That wasn't, he, he was able to have that ceaseless prayer because it was relational. It was relationship based. So he has something to talk to God about or he has something to talk about to God all the time because it was about relationship. So it wasn't also, as I said earlier on, it wasn't about his faithlessness that maybe God didn't hear the other time. No, it was about the fact that he was full of faith. He was faithful, F -U -L -L, and he was faithful in the sense that he was consistent. So that was what it was concerning his prayers. The second element I want us to see so we've seen about his continuity, consistency of faithfulness. The second thing I want us to see about his prayer was it was selfless. We've seen Colossians 1, 9 already, so we don't need to go there again. Let's see 1 Thessalonians 1, 2 to 3. You see, virtually every verse we read about him, it was praying for others. We give thanks to God always for you, all making mention of you in our Prayers, verse 3, remembering without ceasing. You have seen that without ceasing again. Your work of faith, labor of love. So our emphasis there was on the fact that praying for others, praying for others, is prayer life look outward. You see in the scriptures that it was only once that pray, Paul actually asked people to pray for him. And the reason why I said once is the fact that we only have it recorded in First Thessalon in, in the book of Thessalonians. It's repeated twice, but it was only to the church in Thessalonians where he said, brethren, pray for us. First Thessalonians 5.25, Second Thess and Second Thessalonians 3.1. You know, for most of us would have done the reverse. It says um, First Thessalonians 5.25, right? Yes, it says, brethren, pray for us. Let's see the other one. 2 Thessalonians 3 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us. So you could see that. So that was why I said once, because it's only in the book of Thessalonians we see him saying, pray for us. For most of us, it should have been the reverse. It would have been, we say more, people pray for us, and we do less praying for others. Can I say that again? We do more saying, Please pray for me that we say we pray for others. But we'll see that, no, that's not what, 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 what the Bible teaches. That's not what God, that's not what Christ teaches. You know, that's something I call, I tag, blessedness of selflessness. Blessedness of selflessness. If you read in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Acts 20, 35, Bible says, 
it is more blessed to give than to receive. So that's what God, so selflessness. So are we saying we shouldn't pray for ourselves? No, we pray for ourselves, but we are saying we need to be more intercessory. We need to pray, you know, more for others. So we need to look out and think more about others than we think about ourselves. No wonder Paul could say that he was, he was no wonder he was thankful. You know, this, most of the scriptures we're reading about Paul, he wrote them in prison and yet was able to say rejoice evermore because of his focus. He looked beyond himself. He looked outward. So, and he also looked upward. So that was why he was able to be able to thank God all the time. His prayer life wasn't situational. It was relationship-based. It was relational. It was me talking to God, and it was me looking out for others. Another thing, so we've seen only once, we see him asking others to pray for, for, for him. We all also only once We'll see him praying for himself that way. Now let's read the very popular one, which is 2 Corinthians 12, 8 to 9. Only once him requesting others to pray for himself, only once him praying for himself, according to the record which we have. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times. So the, 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 it's, I'm saying once because this is the only re record time. And if you look at, put this in context, the three times there's more of, you know, I kept at it until God gave me an answer or until God gave me an assurance. And what was the assurance? Verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. So those are the things, therefore, most gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon him. So that was one thing we saw about him. You know, when I was preparing to, uh, when I was preparing to, um, for this, one of the things that came to mind, and um, I'll just quickly mention this in for, because I believe that, they, that there are people that will be asking themselves, I've been reading the scriptures over and over, what is this thorn in the flesh? that Paul was talking about. People have referred to it as, you know, he, was, he had a sickness, he had to this. I just want to quickly mention to you so that you will not be imprisoned by wrong doctrine. You know, that sometimes people will say, maybe this sickness is from the Lord. At least Paul said this. No, if you look at the scriptures and if you knew anything about Paul, Paul was learned in the Old Testament. So he referred to several terminologies from the Old Testament. And we'll see this terminology of thorn in the flesh repeated in a couple of places. So you might want to quick, quickly write this down. We don't need to open up to them. You can um, check them out later on. And those are Ezekiel, for those of you that are wondering about the thorn in the flesh, Ezekiel 28, verses 24 to 25. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 24 and 25. And also Numbers chapter 33, verse 55. Numbers chapter 33, verse 55. You'll see that in all the, those instances, every time the Bible talks about the thorn in the flesh, there are many other scriptures, but just look at those two. And if you have a Bible with cross-referencing, it will show you many more. You see there that it didn't talk about a situation. It, it didn't talk about conditions. It was talking about people. So please, you can do that, you know, as your, as your take-home assignment study. So um, that, that was just... Uh, a side thing. So we've seen that his prayer was ceaseless. We've seen, seen that his prayer was selfless. The third thing I want to say about his prayer was it was spiritual. Spiritual. What do we mean by that? We'll see as we move on. And you see that that's one of the things we've adopted. Every time we do prayer and fasting and we spend time to pray in this, in, in this fellowship and also in the, in the assembly as a whole, you see that we emphasize on praying for the spirit, soul, and body. And you see that our emphasis is always that we start with the spirit, we go to the soul, and then we go to the body. And so based on the fact that our priority should be spirit, that is eternal relevance. So his prayer was spiritual. If you look at the, the we, we've read Colossians 1 9, uh, 1, 9 to 12 already. I don't want us to read it again to save some time. But let's read, for, um, um, let's read Ephesians 1, 15 to 17. You see that what we have there is similar to what we saw in Colossians chapter 1, uh, um, verse 9 to 12. Therefore, also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease. Are you seeing do not cease again? To give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory in his inheritance in the saints. Let's keep reading verse 19. And that what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us will believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You know, I want us to quickly crystallize six things out of there, out of what we read in Ephesians, out of what we read in Colossians. You know, I will quickly, uh, uh, it will make sense, uh, talking about the scriptures, you see that his prayers focus on earth and minds being conformed to Christ. You know, the Bible says in James 4, 3, that many at times we do not receive of our prayers because we, we do not receive because we ask our means, that we may spend it on our pleasures. The emphasis of most prayers are on the physical, are on the material. But if you look at all these prayers we've seen, you see it was regarding his will. That's the first thing that I will see on that spiritual. It was regarding God's will. Um, um, we'll see, you, see, you can pick that up from those scriptures. Bible says in Romans 12, verse 2, that you know that when we have our mind we need, we'll be able to know that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our lives. The second characteristic, talking about the spiritual prayer, was regarding God's wisdom. We saw it there. His wisdom. Bible says in, in James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 5, that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who give to all liberally without upbraiding. We saw his will, his wisdom, and the third thing we saw there in those prayers was regarding his ways, the way God does things, the ways of God, you know, the wisdom of God, you know, according to his ways. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 7, that Psalm 103, verse 7, and Moses knew God's ways, and children of God is asked. But oftentimes, so that was why Moses stood out from the rest. Most people were running after his ways, after, sorry, after his works. After his miracles, Moses was after his ways. Moses was after spiritual things. So we've seen that his, uh, his work, I mean, sorry, his will, his wisdom, and his ways. And all the things we've seen in those prayers have to do with our work, our work with him. The Bible says in Galatians 5.16, walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.16, our walk with him. Another thing we see in those scriptures has to do with our work for him, there we see about, it talks about good works, our work for him. And then the third thing, we, the, the third thing it's talking about from our side, we see three things from the side, three things from our side. It has to do with our wherewithal. What do I mean by that? The enablement, the ability. So it talks about we've been strengthened in our inner man. So you see that this should be the components. I, like you remember I said earlier on, shouldn't we, should we stop praying about physical things? No, but we are saying, let spiritual prayers, let things of the spirit, let them take priority in your prayer life. And finally, for, to, for, for, for the day, is prayer life was spirit led, was spirit led. I want us to read the popular scriptures, Romans 8, 26 to, um, 20, 26 to 28 in the Amplified. Romans 8, 26 to 28 in the Amplified. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid, bears us up, so it carries us in our weakness, for we do not know what, we, what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit. What his intent is because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to, to and in harmony with God's will. So please quickly spare me two minutes so that we can unpack this a bit. So there we see with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but we cannot be spirit led if you are not spirit fed. I mean, if you are not, yeah, if, if, you, are, if you are not spirit fed or spirit filled, Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, Ephesians 5.18, be not filled with wine, wearing in excess, but be being filled by the spirit. 
So we've been filled by the Spirit, and then we'll be led by the Spirit, we'll be able to pray, you know, in accordance to His will. Let's read um, 1 Corinthians together. 1 Corinthians. So take note of that. We cannot be Spirit led if you are not spirit fed or spirit filled so we need to be filled by spirit on a regular basis yes paul talking about the characteristics of his prayer so please as i said earlier on please just spare me two extra minutes what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit i will also pray i want to take note of that i love the fact that this was highlighted here i will pray intentional with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. So you could see spirit led. Let's read verse four of the same, of the same um, verse, of the same chapter rather, verse four. And then we go back. Um, so I intentionally picked those um, in, in, in that sequence because I want us to see, he talked about himself, what he did, and then we moved on to talking about others. So he said, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So when we pray in other tongues, we are being edified. We are being built up. We are being built up. You see there I was talking about when you prophesy, you edify the church. When you speak in other tongues or pray in other tongues, you are edifying yourself. And when you talk about edifying yourself, that is building ourselves for eternal relevance and that could only happen when you spend more time praying in other tongues finally for today let's read if the same let's read verses 17 and 18 of the same um, chapter for you indeed give thanks well so when you give thanks in other tongues you give thanks well so you might not know what you're saying but the bottom line is you're giving thanks well you are edified, or even though others might not be edified, but as far as you are concerned, you are being edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. So that was, that was it. So Paul clearly said it, that I spoke in tongues more than you all. So those are things about the prayer life of, of Paul. And I want to encourage us, just as we've read earlier on, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we need to imitate him in all this. I believe as we do pray as he, as he pray, we'll be edified and God will be glorified. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow. What, what a powerful, powerful, powerful series we've just been through. God bless and increase and multiply you mightily, sir. Mm-hmm. We've been so blessed. Eternal relevance one to five. Uh, this is the kind of series to take advantage of the recordings that we have um, for us to allow these truths to sink in and um, our lives will not remain the same. L- let's just uh, proceed to speak words into our lives as regards the things we've heard today, you know, and seal them in. The confessions will come up on the screen in a moment. And once they do, we can proceed. All right, they are up now. One, two, go. I declare that in this month of September, I'm a doer of God's word. I'm a doer and not a hearer alone. I make tremendous progress in the things of God. I declare that there is fire on my prayer altar. I will pray ceaselessly and I will pray selflessly. I will give myself to much praying in the spirit. And as a result, my life will be spirit-filled and spirit-led. I declare that in the place of prayer, I daily realign with God's will and God's way. In the place of prayer, I receive grace, strength, and wisdom for my life's assignment daily. I will press in for the much more of God. Daily, I'm changing and radically transforming into the image of the Son, who is the express image of God's person. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, with this series, our lives cannot remain the same. My own life cannot remain the same, and I'm sure that's the same the same with you. Uh, Before we proceed, we would like to welcome very special people in our midst, and we're talking about you if you are joining us for the very first time today. I see uh, 
Sister Bingwe Alabi. You are welcome, Ma. God bless you. We are so, so, so excited mm-hmm. to have you. If you don't mind to unmute your mic and say hello to us, or if you are comfortable uh, showing your video as well, so we could see your face to just say hello. We are so excited to, to have you today. Hello. Hi, Sister. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, you're welcome, Ma. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. We're so excited to have you. I'm sure that you will be there, I see Malcolm there as well. You're welcome, Malcolm. Yes, Malcolm. Say so thank you. Bye, Malcolm. Hello, Malcolm. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I was saying that, I, that I'm, I'm sure you were blessed. I'm not even asking. I'm certain you were blessed. Yes. And we would love to see you again and again and again and again. Uh, uh, last week, I apologize. Last week, okay, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. Sir. Last week, there were a few people who were here for the first time from Brother Femi's end. I think I moved on before I got the information that they were here. My sincere apologies if they are still there. And uh, if they are not, my apologies to, to Brother Femi as well. Please extend our heartfelt. Uh, Warm welcome to them. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll do. We have fantastic things to thank you, sir. We have amazing things to celebrate. Uh, but just in case there are others I'm not aware of, uh, any birthdays or anniversaries, we would love to celebrate with you. Well, brother. Paolo, yes. Yes, yes, half a century. Happy, happy. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday, sir. Half Thank a you. century. <laughs> Thank you. Half a century. We yes. are, we are so, That's so yes. excited. Happy birthday. Happy, happy Thank birthday you very much. Happy to you, sir. Thank you. We are Thank so you. excited. Thank so you. Happy birthday, sir. I'm, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. And everyone, you can just stretch your hand to pick a piece of cake from the screen. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just make, make do with that for now. <laughs> and, and, and as if that were not enough, uh, last week Sister Zim got married and today is her birthday as well. We are so, 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 so excited. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure she's here. She, yeah, she, think, she's, uh, she's in the moon. Yes, there, there's, the there's been a talk on the moon. So, yeah. Because she can be transported from from the moon here. Well, we are so excited. And uh, for Mm -hmm. you, sir, brother Pehelo and sister Zim, this will be your best year yet. Your best years ahead and not behind in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Amen. 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 Like we mentioned earlier, uh, the audio recordings are available, video recordings are available as well. Uh, just a message to Prophet Yekola, and you'll be able to get access to to either of these. And uh, just to reemphasize this, uh, a tool that you can feed on God's word all through the week, on demand, all day, every day, is this website here, vinebranchradio.com. You'll be super blessed and super energized and super rejuvenated with God's word around the clock. Uh, trust me, if you try it, you'll be here next week to say thank you <laughs> for it. This is a resource that you don't want to miss. It's free of charge. So uh, just put in that website and uh, you'll see, you see what we're talking about if you try it. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. It's been a phenomenal series. Uh, God bless you again, sir, for being such a mighty vessel um, of God to communicates God's mind to us. So we have one minute left and we'll just say a quick word of prayer before we say hello to each other. Father, we thank you for today. We are grateful for your mind that has been communicated to us. Thank you for today in particular, where you spoke to us about prayer. We receive grace to be selfless in the place of prayer, to Amen. focus on others, to focus on your plans and purposes for humanity. And we receive grace to be consistent, to be ceaseless, not just to pray by uh, desire to transact, but as a relationship that is Mm -hmm. continuous. 
Father, we receive grace to be spiritual in the place of our prayers, that our focus will be on things of eternal relevance, not just ephemerals. And Father, we declare that as we give ourselves to praying in the Spirit, that the results will be evident in our lives. We bless your name for a fantastic week. We thank you again for Brother Pehelo, who has turned 50. We thank you because his best days are ahead of him. Thank you for whatever he has seen or known of you will be nothing compared to what you're about to do in his life. Yeah. Thank you for, as your word says in Proverbs 4.18, that the path of the just is as a shining light, shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. We declare that for Brother Pehelo and Sister Zim in absentia, yeah. that the longer they live, the brighter they will shine. Father, we bless your name for South Africa. We bless your name for our various home nations. We thank you for Vine Branch Fellowship Cape Town. We give you praise. Thank you for Sister Bing Fei who joined us for the first time today. Thank you because your power and presence that's domiciled here is also domiciled where she is, giving her your very mind per time in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for next week. We'll be here again. Hail and hearty, complete, filled with joy, giving you praise. We give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful week. Amen. And you too. Thank you. God bless you.